I put my timer. That always helps. <coughs> Hello, everybody. Um, so I'm asked to speak in the section acts of engagement, and I specifically got by email a question to talk about my practice in general, rather than going into extensive details of projects. Now, that's actually quite difficult, I have to say, because it's exactly in the details that different emotional and relational conditions of the local emerge. But I will give it a try to speak more at large, but will show you a lot of images a side of that to which I'm not going to go into detail. Over the last 25 years, I questioned how to work with my skills as an artist within the complexity of our cities and put myself to work in areas that are undergoing rapid change and huge pressure from the forces of globalization, trying to assist processes that make these tensions visible and encourage people to become actors and agents in the processes of visualizing the dynamics, complexity and diversity of our cities and the inequality of our cities, if you want. A practice that at its basis has a continuous learning about what it takes to collectively take responsibility for the place we live. Thinking public space in line with Rosalind Deutz as the social space where, in the absence of a foundation, the meaning and unity of society is negotiated, constituted and put at risk. And I will talk a little bit about what that means to put at risk. To me, the investigated and explorative qualities of the art should serve a process in which we can learn collectively how we can engage and act upon the world in order to renegotiate the conditions of our existence. Questioning how can we collectively reinvent the city more after our heart's desire? What is that actually, if, uh, collectively reinventing after our heart's desire? How can we turn our political and econ economical choices into concrete actions for change? And how can we move towards collective action despite our differences? Asking how can places become public again? Because I think uh, that they're not public at the moment. Platforms for meeting discussion and conflict. But also how can uh, we work on self-organization, collective ownership and new forms of equality and solidarity. The key concepts underlying such a practice are listening, acting, meeting and inviting. Activities exploring what it means to be an active citizen and how to engage communities around critical public issues. And in order to induce such an engagement, I try to create what I call intermediate spaces within communities, within which any person may speak because I see the arrangement and rearrangement of space, and here space can be taken very literally, like public space or the forgetting of public space, but also metaphorically, space in your heart, space in your head, space to share, as a condition of possibilities for bringing about changes and preferably improvements in social structures. To me, this non-representational process of communication and exchange form the context and the structures of art. So, I will describe a little bit about public faculty, uh, which is my, uh, um, I call my sketchbook. I devise public faculty as a way of training myself over and over again in the, in the act of listening to how people describe their daily conditions. Because in durational projects, and I often work for more than 10 years with communities, I can easily get stuck in the ostensible between the common good and the disenfranchise of, dis disenfranchisement of specific community, or the pragmatic versus the symbolic, or the often fruitless conversations and negotiations with authorities. Public faculties are in my sketchbook to explore the problems encountered in my interrational work. The format is simple and stays the same for each session. It takes four days and four hours, and there's no objection for change. First, there is a base station, which gives the project visibility, like an abandoned stage in Skopje, main park, advertisement signs in Copenhagen, or a Hollywood tour bus on the boulevard, or a public living room in Queens, or in case of Stolpolovini, a simple plastic chair to sit down next to everyone else who was sitting on the street. 
Secondly, a framework, a process of listening, articulation and reflection. reflection. Not only gathering information, but also beginning to access together. Public faculty involves standing or sitting at a location where there's pressure in a city and speaking to whoever wants to engage in a conversation about the issues at hand. Often local, specific embodiments of global conflicts. And this process of questioning doesn't necessarily bring new answers. I'm not looking for answers, I'm not looking for solutions to a problem. What is important is the way people formulate their answers to the questions or pose even more questions, like why are you doing this? Why are you standing here? I learn about how people feel and relate to the conditions they live in and if they think they have any agency in it. It is practicing listening, listening by speaking and thinking together what it takes to be an active citizen and which small acts of resistance can make an ex existing conflict productive and drawing this out in public. It's training myself to listen unconditionally, withholding judgment and putting my own subjectivity at risk. According to Maria Garces, when she talks in uh, Honesty with the Real, being effective, affected is learning to listen, taking things in and transforming oneself, breaking something of oneself and recomposing oneself with new alliances. And this breaking oneself and reincarnating Composing oneself, I think, is a very important exercise we should all undertake daily. This requires integrity, humility and gratitude. Learning to listen in this way is to take in the outcry of reality in its dual sense or in its innumerable senses. An outcry that is suffering, an outcry that is the impossibility to codify richness of voices, of expressions, of challenges, of forms of life. Public faculty for me is an important exercise of practicing the skills of conversations and ways of engagement. And why do I think that is important? Everywhere you see that more and more people feel left out, excluded from the way that their daily environment is shaped, formed, governed and even financed. And like Renzo said, a lot of the conversations take place at a particular part of the world. To be capable to give form to your daily environment, the place where you are, to be capable of understanding the process of imagining, narrating and legislation, or even the process of adding value, is very important in order to be uh, an active citizen, or to be political, if you want. Angela McKay is a local resident and social worker in Anfield, uh, Liverpool, um, where I've been working for the last five years. Um, and Anfield and Liverpool, known from most people as they know from the football club, maybe, um, was going, undergoing a massive regeneration scheme which involved demolishing over 4,000 houses to build a new. And that whole process got stuck in 2008 because of the crisis, leaving the area boarded up and wrecked the community completely. She described this feeling left out of that process that was called housing market renewal, where the key was in the word market, not community renewal, as follows. The local community has had their hopes repeatedly raised and then dashed by promises of neighborhood regeneration, which has been slowly to materialize. After 15 years of living under these circumstances, as they were there, many people have less trust in any government scheme. We are sick sick of the waiting, sick of the waiting for something to be delivered. It's the number of times we have been made promises and have been lied to. To me, housing market renewal means devastation, promises broken and no consultations. And to me it's important because the way she described this being left out of the shaping of the place she lives, she described this state of disconnection as a pathological state as a state of living death, as a sickness, as an embodiment. We, and I say we now, set up camp in an empty former bakery, part of one of the last boarded up blocks uh, in the area. It took us 
four years of baking and countless meetings to counteract the sickness and collectively create the conditions for an alternative to the situation. Because I think we very simply thought like maybe we have to stop waiting and how we can start stopping waking is maybe to try to start making again. It's trying to start produce some kind of space for ourselves. We try to collectively create conditions for an alternative to the situation. A small footprint that combines affordable housing with social space, green space and a collective community business. All in collective community ownership. Through the years, we build it the community again, which has been fragmented and isolated. And we build it step by step, workshop by workshop, or as we say, brick by brick, loaf by loaf, we build ourselves. And although we face an ongoing battle for the right to live and work well, as the bakery and the adjacent houses keep being under the threat of demolition by the council and the ever-changing master plans for the area, um, and, we were, and, and we are really still up to the present day, four or five years into the process, not sure what will be exactly the future of, uh, of, our, um, of our scheme. And this, of course, created in a lot of time uh, a lot of frustration for people that have been working uh, on this process, st stopped waiting, slowly started making again, slowly started to build community again, uh, and then still nothing changed. It felt like we were trapped in the, in the same loop of nothing changes. But what during this process has been most effective is the way people kept fighting. They created the performance Enfield tours, voicing, the way they had or not had coped with the city regeneration scheme through stories, poetry, and by that, politicized themselves. They step by step took over from the biennial of Liverpool, ran a Kickstarter campaign to fund bakery equipment, kept talking about it over and over again to the radio, to TV, to the housing minister and to the council saying, we have taken matter into our own hands. We have to be a force to reckon with. We are the future of Enfield. And we know how to manage land, run a business, and relate to our neighbors. We know actually how to be a community again. And of course, as Fred would say, like dough, this takes time. Time to rise. And you need to, add to add additional heat in order for it to bake. Lorenzo Mondada, writing in Becoming Collective, uh, says as follows, the logic of public action of individuals becoming a collective in the course of their local emergent coordination raises issues not only related to the question of the voicing of group, of being spoken to more than speaking themselves, but more fundamentally to question of what makes collective action possible, of how the group in the making is accomplished through public action. Thinking of collectives not as pre-existing social structures, but as actively becoming in context. This is a way of interrogating the very condition of politics. In this sense, political matters are not restricted to the official public scene, but concern everyday life as it unfolds through the continuous ongoing constitution and discussion of social aggregates. To intervene in such a way that the people who are participating can increase the number and intensity of their ties may seem a simple act to perform. But these processes are always long and sometimes painful, as we have to learn about each other's ideas and different viewpoints. Testing ourselves how to reassess our assumptions and learning how to collectively re take responsibility to make the information gather significantly in social and political context too. And in the center of these processes, cultural interventions are often the only matter in which engagement in these processes can be generated. For my practice, becoming part of the community and being part of the whole process of change a neighborhood is undergoing is key. To immerse myself in a specific situation and stimulate a set of questions that generate interactions between the people involved. To carve out what I call a field of interactions a set of questions that circumscribe particular problematics or tensions that the territory is holding. This set of questions 
generates interactions based on the meeting and the confrontations of people, cultures and ideas. It's exactly in that confrontation that new ideas and social transformation originate. And I'll take you to my hometown, Freehaus in the Afrikanerwijk, uh, what we call our Global South. A neighborhood socially and economically marginalized in the south of Rotterdam, the first in the Netherlands to have a majority of its residents with a migratory background, and with that, its interracial conflicts. The new master plan for 2040, which was based on research senate uh, um, ideas, was pre-rolled in the area to prepare the ground for its arrival. Through legislation and policy alterations, which I would call the invisible design, leaving empty, ter empty territory which people no longer felt and had a part in. Questioning why the area looked like it, questioning why the area looked like it looked, formed the start of a new, of by now a 10 year process. Behind closed doors, the area is vibrant with cultural products and activities. But many of these cultural products and activities couldn't be sold, displaced or taken place in public due to the restrictive regulation and onerous permitting rules imposed by the local government pre-rolling the new pasta plan for the creative city. It was actually avoiding all the, the small creativity in the houses to take part. Friau started actively selling such restrictions in over 300 interventions, which we call acts of civil disobedience. Performant performative actions to mobilize the existing local and physical social culture capital. And here the performative, and it's been mentioned before, should be understood as a way to try to decolonize space, as a performative gesture or intervention that, to Christ, that tries to create a space for confronting of a diversity of individual project, projections versus the projection of the perfect life, the perfect good by local governments who are each time trying to abstract space. And second, we went door to door to look for the unrecognized skills and capabilities of the inhabitants, the curry makers, the knitters, the builders, the painters, the house painters, and the spoken word artists. And we started to accommodate collective production. We opened a series of collaborative workspaces in empty shop that still runs today, a neighborhood store, a fashion atelier, a collective kitchen, creating the conditions for collaborative production allowed individual makers to pool their resources and provided under the umbrella of the collector the necessary papers and permits. New forms of commonality came into, building, came into being through setting up chains of collective production, leading to the knitting of stronger networks into urban unions. So the questions that circumscribe this field of interaction is already a process in itself. Uh, like with the public faculties. Um, and these questions uh, to define uh, the field, like the one defining the 300 different interventions we did, come already from a specific circumstance of a location and from the people involved. From this, and I want to bring that up, I identify a group of people that I call experts on location. Because I really want to um, use a different word than inhabitants or local community, uh, because I always get my hair go stand up like that, uh, because we are all somewhere an inhabitant. We are all inhabit somewhere. So why I use expert on location is also to value uh, all different kinds of form of expertise that are residing in a place. Because experts on location, for me, are people with knowledge of a place. And of course, that can be because they live there or because they daily walk through the area or they work there, or they carry certain knowledge that might be needed for that specific place. These experts are an entry point in order to understand the latent potential of a specific condition and to activate response. Their questions define a field of interaction that can, um, can empower us all to use our specific knowledge to become agents of change. Through our interactions with other experts on location, confrontation and eventually conflict, ultimately a movement starts happening. And if a movement starts happening, change starts happening. Farida, here on the picture, a member of the co-op 
described it as follows. And this was when she was asked by a PhD student how she would formulate this process, uh, which, uh, which uh, was an art process. And she said, this process goes deeper than the surface of this space. This process can't be seen with the naked eye. It is passed on to all the people who come here without mentioning it and without people realizing what this place was doing to them. It secretly painted something in the heads of the women and men, making them see the other with different eyes. And this is definitely an, eye, an art. It's a very beautiful one. And if you sit here every day, you can see it happening though. And I can see it for certain. And I'm hopeful because of that. According to Paul O'Neill, we might also understand participation not as a relation or social encounter with artistic production, but as a socialized process necessary for arts co-production, in which negotiation with people and places are durational specific, yet intentionally resistant to any pre-described outcome, particularly within the context of an urbanization process. And I'm going to round up. As my timer went, very good to have one. Um, and this needs a slow learning and a cumulative change through an open, conflictious, durational and inclusive process. And uh, I was thinking to strike that one out after hearing um, the morning speech, but I keep it in. Because I think this open, conflictual, duration, inclusive process is a steep learning curve and something that we have to learn and practice ourselves, full of political uncertainties for all involved. As it's exactly here that we have to constantly scrutinize ourselves to keep working across education level, class, gender, race, religious and political stanchions and even part of our global world. That for this, you have to become part of the conflict yourself and being submissive to anything you can learn and being reactive to anything a person wants to bestow upon you and wants to teach you, even when, when they are things that you think are unnecessary to learn in order to move towards an interaction process that creates the preconditions for us to become agents of change. In this way, things emerge from the local context and people take position in a process. For this, it's important to let go of any grip and to wait for the spatial and emotional conditions to emerge. You have to let go within your own subjectivity. When we all attempt to lose our subject, subject positions, our ideals and our uh, ideas and place in the world, it is at least partly the precondition for generating something between us that is an actual agent of change. And I end with Zeno uh, Penokunlu, who was describing in a workshop I was before, it was called resistance or resignation. We have to keep trying new forms of resistance and new languages to make politics, preparing ourselves for something much bigger, yet without knowing what it will be. But knowing that the strategies and tools that we are developing inside our small struggles will be able to be used by broader masses. So the question is, how? can we then train ourselves for the unknown, for the yet to come, for the still to imagine, for a common future that can hold our differences. And I think that I learned that this needs a continuous practice to learn, make mistakes, test again, retake, try again, and work at it again and again and again, in order to create a place that allows us to perform our idea, to negotiate hopes, to collectively imagine our future and building new forms of sociality and equality. Thank you. <laughs>